just behind me here is a wild rose in the hedgerow here. Uh, absolutely beautiful plants, one of Britain's most best loved plants. Amazing scents, beautiful flowers. And despite the fact that it's actually the uh, national emblem for England um, and for Yorkshire, the white rose, uh, these depictions actually are normally not of native English roses. The white rose of Yorkshire, for example, is actually a cross between the field rose and the damask rose. There are in fact 14 different species of rose in this country uh, and they hybridise quite naturally so there's quite a lot of different species out there and they're pretty challenging to um, identify sometimes. This one here behind me I'm pretty sure is a dog rose and the reason for this is that there's a, an ancient riddle that has been passed down through the centuries that helps us to identify the dog rose. And you go something along these lines. On a summer's day in sultry weather Five brethren were born together. Two had beards and two had none, and the other had but half a one. And this refers to the sepals of the dog rose. And if you have a look, you can see what the riddle refers to. And you can see what I'm talking about a little bit clearer if you have a look at this bud here. Um, I'm just going to go through these sepals one at a time. We have five. Here's the first one, which you can see is smooth edge, no whiskers on either side. Uh, number two, right next to it, is, uh, I'll go this way around, but, uh, we've got whiskers on both sides of this apple. Number three, you can see smooth again, both sides. Number four has got whiskers on both sides, and number five has, remarkably, got whiskers on this side here, but it's completely smooth on the other. The old riddle tells us that this is in fact a dog rose, Rosa canina. But there's a lot more to wild roses than just their flowers. Here are the rose hips, I'm just selecting a nice ripe looking one. Um, and of course in the primary school I'm sure you've been tormented by itching powder from rose hips. As the butt is open and inside you've got these hairy pips. Um, itchy coos is one of the common names as a result. Um, I've never been convinced that it actually works. Did you get itched by these things? Anyway, itching powder. But dog grows can fulfil a far more useful purpose than just this itching powder. It is, in fact, a food. Now, Gerard, writing in 1597, noted the usefulness of this for making sweets. He mentioned tarts and other kinds of puddings. Um, and in fact, if you just pick a rose hip from a bush like this, um, you can actually eat it raw, it's not great. Now, of course you have to remove the uh, itching powder or uh, the, the seeds which have got a kind of a, a hairy outer coating from the back of the rose hip, or inside of it, and um, here we have some flesh. Now, raw like this, it's not um, a great texture, but the flavour it's really, really intense, really citrus, slightly sharp, but really sweet, kind of fragrant flavour. Really, really nice. Now, one of the reasons why it tastes so good is because it's actually very good for you. Rose hips, in fact, have far more vitamin C in them than any of the common fruit and vegetables that you would normally see in your typical um, supermarket. So, extremely, extremely good for you. Now, as a result of this, in the wartime, uh, when uh, vitamin C from things like citrus fruits became in short supply, the government uh, sent children and other people out into the fields, into the hedgerows, collecting rose hips um, to mash down and make into rose hip syrup, which was then given out uh, and rationed, uh, particularly to children, to ensure that they got their um, daily recommended amount of vitamin C so that they could grow up healthy during the wartime period. Um, and many school, school children made small fortunes from, um, from scouring the hedgerows and, um, and collecting these, these rose hips. So a valuable fruit that is very tasty um, and very good for you. Now to make the rose hip jelly I need to pick a few of these and um, I'm going to show you the recipe in just a moment. Uh, not particularly pleasant to pick because of all the thorns of course um, but the reassuring sign that I am actually picking rose hips and not some other strange thing that's going to give me poison um, 
so I'll pick as much as I can get and um, let's see how we get on.